World of Warcraft has a lot of problems. Dozens, in fact. Maybe even gundreds. But I'm going to talk about the one that I personally hate the most because this is my YouTube channel. World of Warcraft came out on November 23rd, 2004, and upon release it included eight playable races. Humans, Gnomes, Dwarves, and Night Elves for the Alliance, Orcs, Trolls, Undead, and Tauren for the Horde. It would then go on to add two new races every second expansion or so. The Burning Crusade had Draenei for the Alliance and Blood Elves for the Horde, Cataclysm had Worgen for the Alliance and Goblins for the Horde, while Mist of Pandaria gave Pandarians to both factions. For years, this is how things went, and for years, people complained about it. Where is X race? Where is Y race? Again and again, since the dawn of WoW time. And then finally, almost as if it were an act of overcompensation in a desperate attempt to draw back the millions of players they had spent blatantly ignoring and alienating from decades of lazy, uninspired, tone-deaf gameplay and story decisions. They added sub-races. Sub-races. Races based and built off of already existing playable race models, but given a new coat of paint and new racials. Wow. Amazing. Thirteen years of himmin' and hawing. Thirteen years of never ever. And then suddenly, they found the time and effort to add six new palette swaps. We were flush with choice, people. Astounding. Breathtaking. I guess it was just the right time to do it! So, what did we get? Void Elves, because shut the hell up about High Elves. They're never happening. I'm gonna take every single flippin' High Elf and I'm throwing them into the fussing orbit. Light Forge Draenei, we just made these. You have to like them. Broken art marketable to an Alliance audience! Dark Iron Dwarf! Okay, well, that's one I actually wanted. Good on ya. Credit where credit is due. I, I do, I did want Dark Iron Dwarf. I love Dark Iron Dwarfs. That's actually really cool. Thank you, Blizzard. Nightborn, my super special chemical romance elf. They're allowed to say the N-word because they lived in magical escape Detroit for 10,000 years. Hi Mountain Torin. Hi Mountain. More like not Tonka. Zandalari Troll. Hi, I'm Blizzard. I killed all the other trolls in filler C plot patches. So when Blizzard finally relented after being extremely stubborn on something that more or less should have been an easy and fun minimum effort addition to the game, they went ahead and added nearly half a dozen literal who's instead of actual races people had been asking for a literal decade! Who are these actual races? Well, I'm glad you asked. I've compiled using my infinite massive, just absolutely expansive knowledge of World of Warcraft, a superior list of sub-races, as well as their classes and justifications for joining said faction. Starting with the Alliance. High Elves. Just, just do it already, Blizzard! There are more High Elves than Gnomes in the original Warcraft vanilla canon. There's High Elves in Outland. There's an entire High Elven faction in Dalaran. There's been High Elven NPCs in Alliance towns and cities for years now. Just do it! Do it! It'll be easy! Just do it! High Elven class options would basically be the same as humans. Warrior, Paladin, Hunter, Rogue, Priest, Mage, Monk, and Death Knight. I don't think I'd give them Warlock or Druid though to distance them from Night Elves and Blood Elves, as well as to reflect the cultural differences between the various Elves. Plus, you could totally have them start in Elenwyn Forest. They're a well-assimilated people. It's a no-brainer. The no longer canon WoW RPG listed thousands of them in and around Stormwind. It'd be easy, Blizzard! Not everything has to be complicated! High Elves exist! There are people! Just do it! 
Broken Draenei. One of my personal favorites, and if they got in, I would not only shut up, but abandon all my criticisms of Retail WoW and play forever. I would just be a sub for life. I love Broken. Broken are extremely visually and culturally interesting. They're easily the most unique looking race, and their side of the Draenei story is way more compelling. This is because the Broken are made up of the objectively superior Draenei, whom never fled and remained both on Argus and Draenor to fight the Legion, while the ones we get to play are cowards. Broken I see as having culturally and racially limited, but nonetheless interesting class options. Warrior, Hunter, Rogue, Shaman, Mage, Warlock, and Monk. Paladin is a definitive no-go due to the demonic lumbago, and I want to say no to Priest, but we can put it in the maybe bin for shadow reasons. Their starting zone would obviously be the Exodor, I mean, they were on the damn thing. Dwarven Earthen. By that I mean the straight-edged, gem-in-the-forehead, smoothed and polished kind of Earthen. The, uh, the ones the Frost Dwarves use, and not the ugly, craggly ones who look like they're prototype vineyard figures that need to be sent back. This might require a little justification, but are there not dozens of Titan facilities the Alliance has access to or influence over in some way or another? Did Magni not turn into a god diamond? Wasn't Bran making some in Northrend? For class options, I'm a little conflicted about what classes would be appropriate for Earthen, but I want to say Warrior, Hunter, Shaman, Mage, and Monk. This is where things get subjective, because I think they could also be Druids? Because of Freya, but Priests and Paladins are a no-go due to the Titan's agenda taking massive precedence over whatever bullcrap the Light wants. Now, if I was in charge of giving the Earth in a starting zone, I'd like to give them a large cavern underneath Dunmarog. From there, they could fight Trogs, Elementals, maybe some disenfranchised Frost Trolls, and then make their way to the surface via perhaps a tunnel that leads to the basement of Ironforge. And a complementary Earthen district, of course. And maybe another entrance through Nomragon that the Horde can get into to cause trouble, right? Furbolgs. This is what I would like to call the stretch choice. By that I mean it would require actual work and wouldn't just be a simple model swap. But you know what? Warcraft earns a lot of cussing money. So maybe Blizz could just stop being lazy and put in furbogs. Maybe they could pencil it in between making more cash shop mounts. Just a thought. Furbogs have a history of being used as damaged goods in game. Most of their tribes have been corrupted by demonitis or have become insular due to being used as indigenous fodder for a large-scale petty colonial conflict. Though, the Furbogs have had a strong connection with the Night Elves for millennia, and in the Draenei Zone you basically befriend an entire tribe. I'm gonna say it, but it's dumb, and it doesn't make any sense for the Furbogs to be fence-sitters. I see Furbog class options as being pretty obvious. Warrior, Hunter, Priest, Shaman, Monk, and Druid. Easy peasy. For their starting zone, I love the idea of the Furbog's area being a secluded, secret, densely forested mountain valley tucked away between Darkshore and Moonglade that connects to the two zones via those really easily defended bear head tunnels Furbog's love so much. The sort of last untouched place in Kalimdor that resembles what Teldrassil or Ashenvale looked like before they were burned down. And finally, it's time for the heated, it'd be better off being used to expand character customization options and shouldn't realistically be used for their own separate race option, Lightning Round. Wild Hammer and Dark Iron Dwarves, the very notion that Blizzard thought it was cool to make you grind and do quests to play a color swap of a race you already see in the dwarf starting zone is poop! Poop! Ah! They've been a part of the Alliance since Cataclysm! Wild Hammer's been in since vanilla! Stop being lazy! They're literally just a tattoo or a recolor! You're pathetic! 
Warcraft is an 11 billion dollar IP, you parasite! On to the horde. Undead high elves. Okay, so Arthas literally genocided like millions of elves. The undead racial leader was an undead high elf. What the hell is the matter with you, Blizzard? Where are all the high elves, Blizzard? You'll put in shadow elves. You'll put in space elves. You won't put in undead elves. I hear you're gonna put in undead night elves. Your hacks, you make me sick. I see undead elves as having the same class options as undead, more or less. Warrior, hunter, rogue, priest, mage, warlock, monk, and death knight. No problem. There you go. Bam, bam, bam. Undead high elves would obviously start in Terrace Fall Glades. Same as all Forsaken. Though I think them having their own district in Quel'Thalas would also be really cute and fun. Honestly, Quel'Thalas and the Sunwell being a neutral city for all High Elves would also be cute and fun, as it's what they all fought and died to protect, and their collective racial heritage, but Blizzard doesn't do cute and fun, do they? Half-Ogres, also known as Mokhnathal. So while quite rare, there are more Half-Ogres out there besides Rexar. And with the Horde's access to the Stone Maul Ogres, the Dune Maul Ogres, Outland and Second Outland, why, why not give them some more? Listen, even if they're rare, this is races for player characters who are already supposed to be a little exceptional in the first place. Mokhnathal class options would probably be more like Torrens than Orcs. Warrior, Hunter, Shaman, Monk, Druid, and Death Knight. I'm putting Druid on this list because half-ogres were always depicted as having a more genuine connection with nature, similar to the Torin. And I'm also putting Death Knight on there because Mokhnathal have been around since, I want to say, Warcraft 2. For starting zone, I think they could either share one with the Orcs, aka classic minimum effort choice, but Going by the map, I think some kind of rugged, mountainous, difficult-to-get-to zone between Ogremar and Ashara could be perfect for the Horde's population of half-ogres. A kind of minimalist zone reflecting the nomadic nature of the Mokhnathal, where there's just a couple of NPCs, a few very small villages, and mostly wild, uncompromised nature. Forest Trolls. Okay, here is my 10-step program. This is what you do, Blizzard. Step 1. Remember the Raven Tusk tribe still exists. Step 2. Give them Jinta Alor. Step 3. And then let us play as them! They're still here! They've been here this whole time! I saw those expanded troll customization options at BlizzCon, so I guess literally every other type of troll is okay, but not forest trolls. Sand. Dark. Zandalari. Just let everyone in but the green ones! Forest Troll class options would be more or less the same as Darkspear Trolls, with the exception of Druid options. So, Warrior, Hunter, Rogue, Priest, Shaman, Mage, Warlock, Monk, and Death Knight. Giving the Horde Forest Trolls a starting zone is a little awkward, because Blizzard is staffed by idiots who made Blood Elves a Horde race. So... Wait, wait, just give them Zeldare! Yeah, yeah! You could make it an entire 1 to 10 level zone, and then have it connect to Silver Pine Forest via boat. Just phase it in. Oh, uh, to those who don't know or aren't aware or have maybe forgotten Warcraft 2, Zuldare is a small island just southeast of Gilneas and northwest of Kul Tiris. It's literally sandwiched between the two nations' shores. Finally, it's time for the Horde's stretch choice, and boy, does this one have some stretch marks, ladies and gentlemen. It's time! I've saved the best for last! It's... Ogres! Gimme Ogres, Blizzard! I want Ogres! They're my favorite pick, second only to Broken. Do it! Do it, Blizzard! We've been begging for years! The Horde has hundreds of ogres. Garrosh personally 
drafted them in Cataclysm. Just do it already! I wanna be an ogre! I wanna be a one-headed ogre! I wanna be a two-headed ogre! I wanna be a big, fat ogre! Now, ogre class choices would be limited, obviously, but still amazing, fun, and stupendous because you're an ogre! Warrior ogre, hunter ogre, shaman ogre, mage ogre, warlock ogre, and death knight ogre. I'd, I'd put monk in the big fat ogre maybe section. Now, if I was given free range to give ogres the cool starting zone they deserve, it'd be a large underground complex beneath Ogremar. Lore-wise, what you do is you have it made during Garrosh's time as an ogre mound, mine, and the solution to Ragefire Chasm's infestation of elementals, cultists, and trogs. By that I mean you flood the caves with OGRES! From there, you just connected both to Durotar and the Cleft of Shadow in Ogremar. Lastly, but not leastly, here's It'd Be Better Off as a Character Customization Option, Honorary Mentions. Literally every shade of not green orc. Dragon Maw orcs. Black Rock orcs. Brown orcs. I think they're called Maghar. Why the hell did you gatekeep being brown? Why did you make it so that Horde Black Rock orcs can't be warlocks? All my old Horde role-playing plans are ruined, Blizzard. Now you're probably gonna think I'd put Tonka or High Mountain Torin in here as well, but I actually think they're culturally distinct enough that they shouldn't be just a cosmetic. However, there's a number of rad as hell looking Grim Totems that we can't look like just yet. As far as I know, their tattoos look great. At it, Blizzard, you ass! Alright, that's all I have to say. This is the end of the video. Go home. You could stop listening now. Don't. D don't. Tell me anything about the Volpera. I don't even want to know. I'm so disgusted by the Volpera. If we get Volpera and we don't get Gill Goblins, I'm just gonna, I'm I'm gonna puke. I hate Mechanomes too. They look like they're wearing a diaper. They're they're not even Mechanomes. They're like quadriplegic, super melegic, double four times as powerful. Amputees. I, I hate them so much. I hate every single decision that I've seen so far. Okay, bye-bye. I love you.